Abba's musical legacy really comes from their hard work in the studio. Just recently we discussed how every individual studio album is so different to the other and how you can really feel a coherent development right up to their new album Voyage. But if we take a look into their concert tours, the very same can be said about those. They couldn't be more different to each other and there is a big development from each tour to the next, culminating in their two world tours and now in Voyage. Let's dive into ABBA's legacy of concert tours and we will see how this upcoming project really is the most logical continuation from where they left the stage more than 40 years ago. Hey, hey, so today we are going back to the very beginning, the inception of ABBA, and this is actually where the entire idea of ABBA almost collapsed. They would describe it as the low end of the collaboration between the four, but I would say this was a crucially important period, and you will understand why. We will be talking about all three tours from that time, their first shows in 1970 and 71 called Fest Folk, the following tour of Björn, Benny and Agneta through Sweden's folk parks in 1971 and the folk park tour of all four together in the summer of 1973, just after they released their first album. We will also explore ABBA's very few but interesting live performances outside of concert tours from this era and to have more context, let us briefly take a look into their history of live tours from before this period, because these were not their first concert experiences, not even by a long shot. All four had been touring individually massively in the 60s and combining all those concerts together or even just all the concerts from ABBA's first tours was way more than all of their later concerts combined. They did so many concerts in their lives before that by 1973 they felt nostalgic about returning to Sweden's folk parks even to the point that being on stage no longer held any special attraction. For almost 10 years, Björn and Benny had been touring folk parks with their individual bands, the Hootenanny Singers and the Hapstars. Agneta and Frida were singing in different dance bands in their early years, and with their start of a professional recording career, they were touring Sweden's folk parks virtually every year, often together with other artists. Something that is very different to ABBA's first concerts is the unusual amount of documentation and transmission from this early solo period. We have a 30-minute documentary about Agneta's first tour from 1968 and a 30-minute program of one of Frida's shows with Charlie Norman. When it comes to live recordings on record, Björn's band The Hootenanny Singers released two live tracks as early as 1964 on one of their first EPs and one year later the English version of their song Darling, co-written by Björn, was released as a live recording on a single in America and Canada. Two further live recordings from the Hootenanny Singers were broadcast on a radio special in 1976, a wonderful rendition of their very first song and a beautiful version of 500 Miles, folk music at its very best. These two recordings could actually be some of the earliest surviving recordings by any of the other members. I'm not entirely sure about that, but we know that 500 Miles was performed on a talent contest arranged by Swedish Radio in September 1963, so this might be that recording and their first single was performed the following month on another contest, also for radio broadcast. Maybe we have some any fans out there who can confirm. But we even got an entire live album by Benny's band The Hapstars in 1965. This was in fact the very first live recording by a Swedish pop group and according to the official Hapstars website was ranked as one of the best live albums ever by an American rock journalist. It really captures the energy of the Hapstars live concerts. In 1969, the story of the Hapstars was over. By that time, Björn and Benny had been working together for three years. Björn had also occasionally played with the Hapstars in concert, and Benny was sometimes on stage with Björn's band, the Hootenanny Singers. This was a dream come true for each of them. Benny was in a pop band, but was more curious about folk music, while Björn was in a traditional folk band, but wanted to be a pop star like Benny. In 1969, Björn and Benny would then go on tour together for the very first time, accompanied by Sven and Lotta and Finn Albert. In the same year, 
They met Agneta and Frida individually, and the four of them became close friends. On their first holiday together in Cyprus, Bjorn and Benny brought their guitars, and during relaxing evenings, the four were singing together for the first time and discovered just how good their combined voices were. It was during this trip when they also performed in front of a live audience for the very first time. It was a spontaneous decision to sing for the United Nations soldiers. And this is where Abba's story starts and their concert history with that. The two couples decided to call themselves Festfolk, which had a double meaning referring to those engaged couples, but also meaning party people. And as such, they would do no live shows in the sense of traditional concerts, but 45-minute cabaret shows between November 1970 and February 1971. By that time, Frida had released 16 songs on 8 singles, Agneta had just released her third solo album, and Bjorn and Benny their first album as a duo. Before this very first tour would begin, the four of them together had their premiere on radio and TV. First off, they recorded three of their own songs on a radio show, from which one was released in 1997 on Frida's compilation we recently discussed, and which makes it the oldest surviving live recording of three future members of ABBA together, with Björn on guitar and Benny on piano. On a TV program a few weeks later, they performed California Here I Come and Red Roses for a Blue Lady, and curiously, those two songs were no original own compositions, but cover versions. And if we combine these first radio and TV appearances of all four future members of ABBA, we basically have an idea of what the festival cabaret shows were all about. It was a mixture of cover versions and own songs. They would open with a medley of songs written by Björn, Benny and Agneta, and they would also perform two songs from Frida's upcoming first album, the lead single and Barn and Sover, which they premiered on that radio program. Likewise, they possibly also performed Agneta's Somit Echo, but the rest of the show were cover songs performed by Björn and Benny and Agneta and Frida. And that's where the big problem was. Not only would they sing other people's songs, there would even be sketches and trivial jokes. On top of that, the environment wasn't really to their benefit too. People would order their meals and raise classes to each other, and as Björn said, just when they failed to have reached the audience, someone would raise their class and say cheers. Sometimes they had 400 of those people in the audience, but on other nights there were only seven. And all of this sounds like a disaster, but the reviews were all right, and above all, even if they feel so embarrassed about this period, in my opinion, this was a most important part of their story. As Björn described it, it was a low point, but I would say that has less to do with the general quality, but more with the fact how they just didn't use the immense talent that they had, and really just the bare minimum of that. They wouldn't start with a bang, at least when it comes to their concert experiences as a foursome, so they had to either leave it or get better and we are lucky they decided for the latter. And to realize that they had to get better, it wasn't only the fact that they performed other people's songs, but the contrast of having their own songs in the set list too. For those would receive by far the best audience reaction, especially the final song, which was Hey Gam Le Man. That one was performed with new lyrics on the first few shows, but was soon replaced with the original version. I'm not quite sure why they would create a cover ratio in the first place, when all four of them were already popular and had so much experience with doing concerts. Maybe it was the positive reception of Björn and Benny's cabaret shows with Sven and Lotta and Finn Albert, as well as Frida's cabaret shows with Charlie Norman. Perhaps some of you have another idea about that, but it might as well simply have to do with the time of year, the cold winter month, which wouldn't give them any chance to perform outdoor concerts how they would usually do. But that would certainly change in the spring and summer of 1971, which brings us to a most unusual tour in more than one way. This time, Frida decided to go on tour with Lasse Berghagen. They also recorded two beautiful songs together for a single release. It was also around this time that Frida decided to start studying, so Abba's future really wasn't a certainty. This long fast folk experience made them aware that it's not a good idea to both work and live together, and that it's easier to get in a bad mood. They sat in the car together, dined together, performed together, checked in the hotel together, it was just too much. So Abba was left as Bab, B-A-B, and Agneta, together with Björn and Benny, would do 60 shows through Sweden's folk parks between April and August that year. Like with Festfolk, there was actually a TV appearance as well, when Björn, Benny and Agneta performed three of her new songs in Skansen, but this time, unfortunately, no footage has survived, apart from photographs. 
For their cabaret shows, they were backed by the dance band The Lolas, and this time they were backed by bass and drums, and each show would last again for about 30 to 45 minutes with 10 to 12 songs. When it comes to those songs, the setlist seems to be a logical progression from the Fest Folk shows. There would still be some cover versions and sketches, but it looks like they included much more original material. Agneta was working on her fourth solo album during this period, and she would preview many songs during these concerts, along with a shortened version of her very first single, her latest single, and they would also retain Hey Gamelman as well. But there was also a brand new Björn Benny composition called Svea. It would only ever be performed on this tour, but it was actually recorded in the studio that summer with Agneta and Frida on backing vocals, but this recording remains unreleased to this day. However, we do have a transmission in some sort. In 1974, it was updated for a single release by none other than Rutger Gunnarsson, Abba's bass player and arranger, and on this version, Abba's backing vocals are still there. All of the songs and aspects from this very special tour, including the sketches, were praised in reviews from the time, as was the charming presence of Agneta and Björn, who got married during this period. However, as I already said about their cover show, it was also remarked that, once again, they have gone for the easier option, with one reviewer saying that this was a shame since Benny was one of Sweden's rare real composers. And from then on, this would change, and it would be the most crucial aspect that finally leads to ABBA being ABBA, and to the very first Fall Park tour of all four together. Björn and Benny abandoned their work on their second solo album as a duo, for which the song Svea was intended amongst others, and in 1972 they started to record and release songs specifically written for all four of them, Björn and Benny, Agneta and Anifried. Meanwhile, over in Japan, Björn and Benny's song She's My Kind of Girl got into the top 10, which seemed quite arbitrary, but would be very important. So before they returned to live concerts the following year, they flew over to Japan to perform one of their new songs live at a Japanese festival. The song was Santa Rosa, and the studio recording only featured Björn and Benny, so for the live version, this was changed to lead vocals by Björn and Agneta. They would do something similar again later for their 1974 and 75 European tour, which we will talk about in our next episode. This trip to Japan must have been their first trip outside of Europe as artists, but above all, this international, albeit brief success, was just another big reason for them to be really encouraged. In February 1973, they performed a second song live on TV, this time Ring Ring at Melody Festivalen, Sweden's pre-selection for the Eurovision Song Contest, which came third. The following month, their very first album by the same name was ready for release. So between June and September 1973, they performed no less than 80 concerts through Sweden's folk parks, and for the first time, they had an entire album by all four of them together, from which they could choose songs for their concerts. Well, the thing is, we don't really know which songs from the album they performed. They did perform Ring Ring and People Need Love, along with He Is Your Brother, which were all their singles at the time. But there is also the possibility that they performed En Carousel, She's My Kind of Girl and Santa Rosa, as well as Nina Pretty Ballerina, and judging from some photos, Love Isn't Easy, but it sure is hard enough. Again, None of these songs is confirmed to have been performed, but it is possible. And beside this wealth of original songs, and English songs for that matter, there were also some cover versions again. Amongst those was a medley of Swedish children's songs, as well as the Beach Boys song, I Get Around. This would be the final time that ABBA performed songs from other artists for any of their concerts. In 1978, they would also sing other people's songs for the American TV show Olivia, and during the so-called jam session, they happened to sing two songs from the Beach Boys as well. Help me run, help me get around on my run. By the way, on that show, Abba was introduced as being born on the 1st of November 1970, and that happened to be the first date of their first tour as Fest Folk. For their Folk Park concerts in 1973, they had a backing band consisting of Rutger Gunnarsson on bass, Anders Nord on guitar, and Kjell Jepson on drums. The tour was successful and got positive reviews. The most curious thing is, however, that with each tour from this early period, there seems to be less and less documentation. This time, we are left with reports, 
photos and even an incomplete set list. Not even their appearance at Melody Festival and survived. It has never been seen on video since then. Only a few years ago the audio track came to light in low quality, so at least we have something and an idea of how ABBA sounded live during this period. The audio of their performance of Santa Rosa in Japan was also only released in recent years on YouTube by ABBA Talk and also just in recent years we got a rare glimpse of ABBA being filmed on stage for a Belgian TV show. We never got the actual performance, just this short behind the scenes video, but the setting always reminded me of those folk park tours and how it all could have looked like. The only official release related to this tour is a spoken word greeting that was recorded to promote the concerts. It was commercially released again just a few years ago on the deluxe edition of Ring Ring. We have much more with their next tour where we even got a recording from an entire concert from the perspective of a fan. Before that tour they would try it again with a new song on Melodie Festivalen which they won. It would send them to the Eurovision Song Contest where they would win again, the song was Waterloo and now it was time for a tour through all of Europe. On our next episode we will be talking about ABBA's tour of Europe in 1974 and 75, the actual disasters of their tour and why they ended up in Swedish folk parks again in 1975. And we will also talk about how we almost got a documentary for Swedish TV of this fascinating tour. All of this and more next time. For now, I hope you enjoy this look into ABBA's very early years. Again, there is not too much documentation, just a few bits and photos here and there. Everything else that is left from this period are memories. So if there should be someone, anyone out there, seeing this video, who was actually there for one of these folk park concerts, or who was even one of the people raising their class to a very young ABBA, then called Fest Folk, that would be something. If you are out there, please let us know your experience in the comments below, for your memories are really all that is left from these fascinating early years. I also want to thank the amazing website abbatheconcerts.de where you can find virtually every information about all of ABBA's concert history. It assembles all the research by Karl Magnus Palm and many others, reviews from the time and much more. Please check it out. Alright, until then, hey dude.